Hey folks, Bray from DCRamerica.com here. Today we've got the new DJI Mavic 2 Pro and Zoom drones, and I'm here to talk about ActiveTrack. Uh, now, I've talked about a lot about ActiveTrack in the past and how that works, and essentially ActiveTrack is the ability for the drone to follow you while you're doing something hopefully cool, hopefully just not walking around a park and calling that exciting. So in this case, I'm gonna do cycling, uh, and what's interesting about ActiveTrack and the different modes that DJI has is that it'll record you automatically and control the aircraft in flight. So it's not only controlling where the aircraft's going, but it's following you in your track point, keeping you in focus, all that kind of good stuff. It actually recognizes an object. So you basically tap an object, whether it be a person or a horse or a car, it doesn't really matter, an object, and it goes ahead and it, from a camera standpoint, follows that object. Now in the past, what's happened is it uses the camera on the drone itself uh, to follow the object, and it wasn't all that great. It, you know, you could usually, like again, an open field scenario, walk around just fine, and it would follow you. But if you tried like cycling or running, it wouldn't last that long very very often it generally even the slightest tree or something like that it would lose you but with the mavic 2 there's new active track 2.0 um, and that's on both drones whether it be the zoom or the pro and what that does is it leverages the additional optical sensors on the front there to go ahead and track you uh, so now you've got these two optical sensors there uh, that's used primarily for object avoidance plus the camera there and it's got, it has three different sources so it's creating essentially a 3d map of what you, where you are and then from there dji is predicting where you're going to go up to three seconds in advance so it can look at something like when you go past a tree and figure out where you are where you're about to go and hopefully find you on the other side of that tree versus in the past when that happened it lost you every single time and the drone would just stay there and you had to go back and get it. It was, it was really annoying. Okay, now one quick thing I wanna kind of caveat here is all of this video is about solo shooting of yourself. Um, that's what really interests me as an athlete, the idea that I can go out somewhere by myself for a ride or run or whatever it may be and have the drone follow me by myself and not have to have an entire camera crew of friends do that control for me. Of course, ActiveTrack can still do that and do that really, really well. In fact, just a little bit ago, I did that with another cyclist where I was following her and controlling some of the movements around that. And I got some freaking epic shots doing that because I had a lot more control about where the camera is as opposed to just letting the drone kind of follow behind me or to the side of me or whatnot. So I just want to kind of make sure that's clear. Obviously, you can still do that if you have a friend. And in general, as you can see in these shots, I'm going to get a heck of a lot better shots if I've got a friend controlling the camera for me. Still, this is about solo tracking. Uh, and in the case of the Mavic 2, there is one big catch here, which is the fact there's no Wi-Fi connectivity directly to the drone. That's a big change from almost every other DJI drone they've had in the past. And you may say, why does that matter? Well, when you go out and try to track yourself, you have to have a way to bring that controller with you. In the case of the bike, I've got it like strapped on here with a quad lock case and a couple X rubber bands it's sketchy as crap um, and it rattles the entire way down this path like any bump at all and it's, it's just not ideal and it's clunky you imagine trying to ski or snowboard with that that's you're gonna press buttons and put in the back it's just not very practical so you say well i can use my phone instead and you could have in the case of like the mavic air or the spark you can use just your phone and as long as you didn't have the screen lock it would actually kind of sort of work with the Mavic 2, there is no phone connectivity. And that all said, we're gonna go ahead and just talk about how well it actually works and how well ActiveTrack 2 works in terms of obstacles and tracking and just simply riding faster. Here, you can go up to the full 44 or so miles an hour that is the Mavic 2 um, in ActiveTrack mode. Of course, assuming you know winds, all that kind of stuff um, isn't against you which is one caveat here as you may see behind me it is really windy here today but we've had zero problems we've been out here on our fourth battery now um, with active track testing and wind no problem whatsoever so with that what's going to happen is i'm gonna get this thing up in the air here and i'm gonna show you how after track works some of the profile modes and i'm just gonna go and ride until this thing stops tracking me it's as simple as that okay so we got the drone ready to go here i'm simply just going to take it off Nothing special on takeoff, just like normal. Simply find a safe place, up you go. And I'm gonna go ahead and just bring it around the corner here and get it kind of set up uh, facing me. So I've got myself in between two trees, you'll see in just a second. There we go. So I'll just go right here so the drone can see me. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into active track mode itself. So on the controller, I simply hit the little intelligent uh, flight modes option, left hand side there. Then I hit Active Track, and then there's three core modes in Active Track. There is Trace, there we go, sorry, Trace, Profile, and a Spotlight. 
in the case of trace, it's going to generally track from behind. It can also do in front of you as well. Um, in front of you is sort of a sketchy area though because you can easily outrun it and then if you go under it too closely, a lot of times it'll lose you. That's what we've seen out here today is it'll just simply, if you cut underneath it, it'll kind of lose you. See, so you got to kind of go slowly and then it works fine. Profile is from the side just like it's doing right here. And then a spotlight is when you're going ahead and going to manually control the drone itself, but it will track the objects. That's really for like if you got friends with you. Um, so there's also another option, a new option there called safe down the bottom. So this essentially controls the max speed um, of the drone itself. So if you go beyond the safe limits, then you're kind of on your own for things like obstacle avoidance and stuff like that. It gets a bit sketchy. In the case of safe, it'll use all the obstacle avoidance sensors on all sides of it, including the one on the top, which is new with the Mavic 2 compared to the Mavic Air, um, the Spark, uh, the original Mavic, and that keeps you from going up into trees. And you may say, why do you care about that? I promise you, as one who has crashed every single autonomous drone out there, almost every single time it's going up into trees. What typically happens is the drone flies under the tree where it's clear, and then when it tries to escape danger, it goes right up into it and bonks into it. So it's cool that this has uh, the obstacle avoidance on top of it to avoid that. So with all that set up, you'll see myself is already selected there. There's a little dot on me. I just simply tap that dot, and then that's it. That's all you've got to do to start ActorTrack. So now we'll go ahead and get going. And you may hear a lot of clicking. That is simply the remote controller uh, clicking on my handlebars there. Um, it is what it is. In the case of the zoom, that works just fine. I can flick it all the way up to the top there and zoom in like that. Um, so we may start there like that and we'll go ahead and zoom out. Again, the rubber bands on this kind of block my ability to do that very easily while I'm riding. Generally, when you're first starting, you want to go a little bit wider uh, because of the fact that it lets the drone figure out that you're leaving the scene and it tracks a little bit better. So we'll go ahead and we'll go down to the full 24 mils there. And it'll click me up here again. There we go. So I got me selected. So now I'm going to do that. We'll give it a little bit more altitude. Not a lot though, because I like that lower shot. I think it's a lot cooler to be honest. Um, so here we go. <coughs> so you can see now it's following me fairly well behind the trees. Pops out. There we go. Nice. That's good. Another tree. These are like these trees in the original Active Track and all the other products that DJI has would have definitely without question lost me. <coughs> so speed wise, I'm not going too fast right now, about 13 miles an hour. On the way back, when I got this tailwind with me, we're gonna get cruising though for the fun of it. So it's getting a little, a little close here. We'll see how well this works. There we go. It's only maybe three meters in front of me right now. And it lost me. And that's part of the challenge there. Let's see if it can find me or not. When you have, uh, when it gets in front of you like that. So we're going to go ahead and tell it to use the other mode now for the fun of it. Um, so that the track, there we go. So we'll pull it up. We'll change the mode over, Oops, our active track. And we're gonna change, there we go, that's what I'm looking for. The trace mode instead, because it's gonna be a little bit better for following from behind, because it's not trying to get in front of me and trying to stay at a certain angle for me. Um, so here we go now. I can control my left and right with those options below that, but given I'm riding, I'm not gonna really try to do that here. The ground's a bit bumpy. There we go, it's kind of cruising along. It's nice, it didn't see the other cyclist, it didn't like catch on to him or anything like that. I was above him, so it wasn't really a problem. See no issues though, like it's pulling along. I'm gonna give it a little bit of altitude for the fun of it, just to uh, change the scene up a little bit here. And we just lost it again. So it's not always perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it a little bit and we're gonna go back the other direction. Okay, now we got me in, in, the, in the field of view there. Everything's good to go. We're gonna go ahead and go zoom this way down. And I'm gonna show you that we can generally track the entire way down, 
Um, it's just a matter of, of luck, honestly, with Active Track. And like, it's funny, like we had a lot of really good success up until this particular segment. Um, but uh, we're gonna go ahead. This is what it's actually like. And this is something that I think a lot of people try to like skip past and having shot a lot of Active Track videos over the years. Uh, it's always kind of variable whether or not it'll work or not. So here we go. Okay, so we're about uh, 15 miles an hour. We're gonna kick things up a little bit here by not going over the edge of the grass. Cruising on 19, almost 20 miles an hour. Let's go. This path was not designed for high speeds here. a sprint, see if it'll hold on, and it's managed to. I was up to 25, I think, there or so, so not too shabby. So as you can see there, having the behind view is definitely the best bet for stability there. Um, also, uh, right now I'm still in active track mode and just simply controlling it left and right around me, so it knows me as the object and it's going around me at avoid the tree there when slightly above it, which is kind of cool. But I can go ahead and just give that perspective change anytime I want. So we're gonna do one more run, just down and back to see how well things work for the fun of it, and then we'll wrap things up. Okay, this time we're kind of kick things up a little bit more, just because, just because, uh, we well, haven't got so much battery to work with, of course. Here we go. I'm about 20 miles an hour right now into a pretty stiff headwind. The drone, I'm sure, is noticing as well. Got a bit of a corner here, don't want to skid out on it. I'm going to see if I can, with one hand here, swing this around to the right. There we go. A little more perspective change there. And you get some pretty cool shots like this though. And we lost me. So like I said, sometimes it works pretty well and sometimes yeah, so-so. And we'll do one final pass. We'll see how fast I can get it cruising around the corner here with the tailwind. It's even clear about 30 or so on this path. It's not really designed for it though. The path that is. Maybe not me either. Also, this remote controller is definitely not designed for this. And that's 27, 28. It's not super stable for this turn here. But it kept up though, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna loop it around this way as you come in here. Get that super cool side shot with the windmill there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flick it forward to zoom all the way in. And these are sort of super cool shots that you can get um, once you get good at playing with Active Track. Okay, so there you go, a look at the new DJI Mavic 2 in Active Track. As you can see, overall, pretty impressive. They definitely made some bumps up from the past. It's still not to the level of like the Skydio RDO R1 drone, which has its 13 cameras on it and all that craziness that I tested back this past spring. You can check out that video up there. That was crazy cool. It's also twice as much from the price standpoint. That drone is not awesome at all for anything other than tracking you as a sports person. That's what it's good at, but it sucks for everything else. That technology that Skydio has is without question the future of where things are going. But what DJI has done here with additional sensors has definitely stepped up their game. 
it's at the point now where I could definitely consider for some shots that I need to do, especially when it's not super complex and there's not a ton of tree coverage and stuff like that. Anyways, if you found this interesting, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there or the subscribe button. I've got some more Mavic 2 videos coming up here in the very near future you definitely will not want to miss. I've got like a cool, super cool deep dive into 20 different things you probably did not know about the Mavic 2. So if you go ahead and whack that subscribe button, you will get the video as soon as it drops here in the next couple days. Have a good one.